All right, let's get into it. This is the bottom part of the GEPRC frame, GEPRC frame, and we're gonna look in how to build it. I'm gonna go step by step, make it a piece of cake. Because the only thing this actually came with was this assembly schematic. This is all that it came with. And initially I thought, oh great, look it, there's a QR code there. Let me scan that. So I went and I scanned it. Went to open it up in Safari. And what comes up is the GEPRC website for the frame. Shop now. Um, no more detailed instructions like I thought maybe it might. Um, I was hopeful. Anyway, let's go through the parts here and, and get into the build. This frame, overview here on this frame, is it's a good frame, you know? I mean, this is pretty solid. It comes in kind of mid-range. There's some real expensive frames you can get around you know, 70, 80 bucks for a frame. You can also get cheap frames for 10 or 15 bucks. This one comes in right around 50 bucks. So it's a little upper end, but nothing crazy. But it's awesome carbon fiber. If you look, it's kind of got a matte black finish. You know, it's kind of a nice sheen on it. And the other nice part about it is this carbon fiber doesn't have any sharp edges. It's, it's pretty smooth. Well, I can you know, rub it back and forth. I'm not gonna cut open my hand. So it's not, it's definitely not gonna cut open any wires or anything like that, which you definitely wouldn't want that. Um, the thickness of this is about five millimeters here. And the top and bottom plates are two and a half millimeters. And then it comes with a few other small parts. You actually have a kind of bumper piece that goes on here. Um, and so it kind of essentially makes it five millimeters thick on the, on the edge as well. I'll get into that on how to put that on. It's gonna be one of the first things we get into. Going on to what this comes with. So it comes with a few accessories. You got some battery straps here. Um, strapping, of course, you get your standoffs, shorter and longer standoffs here. Um, it's a nice kind of metallic gray. Comes with some little tools, Allen key tools. I use this tool, tool set over here. It's pretty awesome. Got it off Amazon, Amazon Prime, you know, showed up two days. Uh, I'll put a link in the description. Um, also for this plate thing, organizes all the screws, which I'll get into now. I'll put a link for that too. These longer screws, these are the M3 times 20 button screws. These are the longer ones that go for mounting your stack in the middle of the frame. Then you've got these two sets of button screws. You have the M3 times 14 and the M3 times 12 button screws. So be careful not to mix these up and put the wrong one in the wrong spot because if you look, pretty close in the length. So, and there's four and four of each. So pull those apart, like I did here. Um, that way you won't get them mixed up. Now you got these four of these M3 times 10 flat screws. These are the ones that mount the bumpers on the ends. And then you have eight of these M3 by eight millimeter long flat screws. These are going into the top plate, into the standoffs. You have some of these, whoops, plastic nuts. And you got some of these metal press nuts for locking down the arms. Um, let's see what else. Of course, there's these little small plates. This is for mounting the camera. And you have your front and back bumper pieces. And also you've got these for locking in your arms. These are the two bumper pieces here. All right. Let's get into this build so you're not sitting around looking at all the parts you have. All right, I wanted to make this important before I start the instructions for this build. The one thing that confused me and why I was Googling and YouTubing how to put this frame together is because if you look here on the top and bottom plates, you have depressions for some of the screws, right? So I just wasn't sure whether the orientation flip up or down. This top plate, I mean, it kind of makes sense. And obviously you pull up a Google image, you can tell this is the side that goes up. You have their GEPRC logo on the top and you have the depressions on the top. So the top piece, fairly straightforward, depressions go on the top. This is the front over here where you have some of the, the camera mounting stuff. And this is at the back where it's nice and skinny. Um, this plate, all the holes, if you look closely, are the exact kind of same, there's no depressions here. And all here, there's no depressions except for these four right here where you mount the flight stack. Now, I didn't know, well, hmm, 
do these depressions go on the bottom? Like, or do they go on the top? Because you can't really tell. And when you look at this assembly, it'll, it, it's showing um, your little squishies, these guys here, coming in on the bottom underneath the frame, which doesn't really make sense. So I looked into it and I finally found out um, from another YouTuber that you can kind of in a way do this two ways to be honest. They did it one way, but you can actually do this two ways. So when you get into this, you can either put these little depressions facing up and you can put your squishy in there and then put your flight controller on there on top of the squishy and it's for vibration isolation. So you don't get weird vibrations, but some flight controllers already come with these squishies and then you'd have squishy on squishy and maybe you're tight for room um, and it just jams it up a bunch and there's no point. In that case, by all means, you can just flip this and use this as that sign. If it's already, if your flight controller already has little squishies on it, then you're good to go. I've got the Mamba F7 stack that I'm planning on putting in here and it doesn't have very big squishies. They're kind of small. So I'm probably going to use these up here and use the little squishy pieces and have my depressions facing up. But I hope that explains for you, you know, on your orientation of whether this is up or down. Maybe that's the only thing you're looking for, but stick around here and I'll show you quickly how I kind of went through it. And you feel, 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 feel you can feel free. You can feel free to mount using the top or the bottom. First step, putting on these bumpers. All right, here's the bottom, here's the top. This is skinnier end, this is the back, back, front, front. I'm going to use these depressions and I want those facing upward from my flight stack. So I'm flipping this over, this is the bottom of the bottom plate. Here is my bottom bumper. I want to put these and use these, these depressions. So if you look, you have a smaller U and a larger U. The smaller U is going to face forward. I'm just going to line that up like that. All right. Now we're going to be using these M3 times 10 flat screws and the longer set of standoffs. So I'm going to go through the depression this way, right into it, fits nicely. I'm just going to twist this standoff on. Just tighten it just enough so I can, obviously I can still shift to line up the other hole, not too bad, just like that. Grab the other one, drop it through. And tighten on another longer standoff. I don't have one of those open yet. Screw and just twist it until it catches. No cross threading here. On this side. There we go. That's pretty good. Now I can kind of push my finger in here and give it a good tighten. We'll tighten up everything with the hex driver thereafter. Um, now I've got this back section on. Should look like that. And now I'm gonna do the front. Front's gonna have, let's see, this bumper piece right here. These other two pieces are for locking down the arms, which we'll get to. Here's the front bumper. You can kind of see these bumpers are cool because they stick out a little bit like that. So they're kind of hit first. And you don't mind if your bumper gets scratched up a little bit, protects your frame. Ultimately trying to protect all your electronics because that stuff's expensive. <clears throat> All right, so using the depressions, we're looking at the bottom here. It's gonna stick over a little bit. Drop in this one. And grab one of my standoffs, which Same 
quickly. Doesn't take too long. Boom. Front bumper's on. Decent and tight. And we're starting to get there. Alright. Video keeps catting up. Let's put these arms on. So this is the back facing towards the front. These arms go on these diagonal holes. And they kind of butt up against each other a little bit. And this arm piece here kind of holds them together and locks them in on top. So let's start doing that. What we need to do first is take the longer ones, which are the M3 times 14 screws, the ones that don't mix up those with the M3 times 12, they're a little bit longer, button screws, and that one goes towards the back. So push that one through the back, goes on the back part of the arm, then the arm plate piece goes on top. And the shorter standoff goes towards the back part of this. Screw that on. And you can screw it on kind of loose. And then the other one that locks the other side of this arm in, you use a press nut with the shorter one, the end of three times 12. So I'm gonna grab some of these shorter ones push it up through. This is where you leave it loose so you can wiggle and get that popped up through. Just like, there it goes, pops up through. So it's just a little bit of clearance there. And then you can pop this press nut on. And you just kind of spin that on. And it can just kind of hold it. It might still be a little wiggly, that's okay. We're gonna tighten it up. Let's put the other back arm on. So this is the back left arm. I'm gonna put it through here and just kind of slip it in. And then the longer M3 times 14 screw coming up from the bottom. Oops. And just kind of wiggle and push till you hit that hole. Push that arm over a little bit. Took me a sec. Now the shorter standoff. Twist it on. And M3 times 12 coming up from the bottom. Hopefully this one goes through a little quicker. There we go. And you press nut. That's your oops, M3 insert nut. Just kind of twist that on. Now what I do is I take your next driver, take your sleeve or a piece of cloth or something, kind of push it up against that nut, try and tighten it down a little more. And what you can even do You don't want to over tighten it, but you want it snug. There we go, got it a little tight. Do the same thing with these standoffs, just tighten them up a little bit. There we go, that's pretty nice and snug. So now those arms. Those, aren't, those are solid, they're not wiggling, they're not going anywhere. You can see how the design works, how they butt up against each other like that, and that helps it for sure. It does make it sometimes as hard as you saw to slip that screw through though. <laughs> but now it's the same thing on the front arms, and I'll go through them, but I may fast forward. But same thing, these line up with these diagonally like so. 
and they butt up against each other and you use this plate. So let's throw those on. Now the furthest forward screws are the ones that use the M3 times 14 to the shorter standoffs. So I'll grab those, throw this forward, oops. Pop that through, pop that down, and put this piece on. And my shorter standoff, oops, there in my bag. Hold that, open this up. Keep it a little looser. Loosey goosey. Let's slip this one in. M3 times 12 to the press nuts. Or insert nut. Slip that on. Bada bing. Leave it a little loose. So there's a little wiggle on that. And that's what you want to help get this other damn arm in. So I'll push this one in, and you're gonna look and see that the whole lineup, see, it's kind of hard to see, but that hole in a way, you really gotta push it up against the other arm, wiggle the other arm, push it up against the other arm, so you get it lined up with that hole. And then this screw should be able to slip through. I do like the, the gold and the black. Gold and black just looks sick together. And especially, like I said, that frame's kind of a matte black. It makes it look real cool. Tighten these shorter standoffs. And everything's just real snug, you know, like I said, it's not nothing crazy torque-wise on that. But there we go. Now we're ready to move on to the next step, which is mounting the motors and then connecting that through into my stack, putting the stack on, and I'm gonna look at that in the next video. Awesome, catch you on the next one.